And good evening, I'm Paul McGuire, and it's with extreme pleasure that I bring to you tonight on the Budweiser Sports Line, Ilio DePaulo, who is Buffalo's favorite all-time professional wrestler. And we're going to talk about pro wrestling. It seems for a while there it might have died out a little bit, but now that, now that everything is coming back to focus, Ilio DePaulo will answer all of your questions right here on the Budweiser Sports Line. Welcome to the Budweiser Sports Line. I'm Paul McGuire. My guest this evening, Ilio DiPaolo, professional going, wrestler. Oh, my friend. I'm gonna tell you, we're going to do some things. He's going to show you some holds later on in the show. Uh, I think we also have a film clip, don't we, Bobby? Or do we? we? We might have something later on in the show to show you. But, Ilio, it is my pleasure to have you here. And, and uh, we've talked. Uh, I met you in 1964 when I came with the Buffalo Bills. Exactly. I remember that. Didn't realize it till the night we were talking that you still were wrestling for one more year. You didn't That's retire until 65. Exactly. I retired in August 65. How many years did you? When did you start? Oh, I started in Italy uh, way back uh, for three, four years before I came in this country. I came in 1951 in this country. I did not come in in uh, Buffalo until 1953. And then then I was between Toronto and Buffalo for three, four years. Then I come back in 1958 for good to reside in Buffalo. And I've been here ever since. In 1964, when you guys come in, uh, uh, football was also new to me. You know, I thought you guys were a bunch of crazy guys to run up the ball. <laughs> <laughs> now I love football. It's is it, is professional wrestling today is popular now or more so than it was in, in, in when you wrestled? I mean, now the television has brought it more to the public, but I mean, uh, I'm talking about the crowds in the arenas. Was it more so then than now? Well, uh, of course, it's got to be more exposure today. Right. Only because of all of the cable TV and everything else. Uh, as far as being popular, well, if we reach more people, is uh, uh, go end and end. But I remember one thing, Paul. We used to have wrestling at Buffalo Auditorium every week. And we draw 8, 10, 12,000 people every week. OK? And they used to show the same match of the auditorium on Friday night. They show them on Saturday afternoon at, at the house, which I had some films. And I have some films and some uh, tapes of that, too, also. And, uh, now, when you draw 4,000 people, that was very, very bad. But that was every week. Now they have a once a month show, mm -hmm. and they draw 10, 12,000 people. So was it so more it was popular more then? then? It was, was more, more then. popular now? You, know, you don't know. Well, yes and no. Because now only the people are good. The way I analyze, I sit back and analyze. I don't watch it. Too many, too many wrestling matches. I haven't got no time. I'm very busy. But what I, what I see is this, is a lot of wrestling fans, great. They have a lot of emphasis, they got a lot of momentum, a lot of, just everything is going on tremendous. But at the auditorium, if we would have wrestling once a month, then we would have turned them away every month. All right, let me ask you this. Are they bigger now? Because I, you know, I, 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 saw, I saw pictures of you. I, I look at your hands, it looks like two catcher's mitts. I mean, you can play baseball without a mitt. Are they, are they that much bigger? Because I, I look back yeah. now, my favorite, when I was a kid, was gorgeous George. Yeah, I have a tape. I gotta show that tape that I have down at the restaurant when, when you come down. I have gorgeous George and a match with me on tape, an F inch tape that you can use at home, you know. But he did spray the ring with perfume and yes. all that? Yes, he was, he was the beginning of Liberace, of uh, uh, Ali. They all copied from, from him. He was a fresh gimmick. He wasn't making any money until he turned to a gold deluxe and throw the baby pens to the people. Uh, he did. <laughs> Do, he didn't wrestle for 20 minutes. And 30 years later, I go see Liberace at uh, the place we used to have here at, um, in Buffalo. Um, Town Casino, or is the, that? The, the one up in uh, Niagara <laughs> Falls Boulevard, okay? okay? And Liberace did not play piano or did not sing for 20 minutes. He did exactly what, uh, what uh, Gorgeous uh, George used to do, but he did show his ring. He showed his beautiful uh, attire that he had. 
he didn't commit himself to do anything for 20 minutes. He copied cop right, cop George George right from the beginning. All right, the serious wrestlers in those days, like yourself, did that make you mad when you saw a guy like Gorgeous George who just captivated uh, the crowd? Yes, it make you mad. But if you think that he comes in, and I, I wrestled him on the main event, so if he draws in and I make my percentage, if he draw the money, you liked him. I, you know, I like him. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, <laughs> you know uh, but uh, uh, it's unfortunate that the guy uh, starts something like that, and then after that, a lot of, a lot of guys did the, a lot of good gimmicks. But again, then it became a lot, you know, everything is gimmick, including a 600-pound guy that you got push and roll into the ring. That's, uh, we had a couple, uh, just when I was wrestling, a couple of those guys, as well as we had some that can move with that kind of a size. Uh, Ilio, but wrestling is is uh, is worldwide. I mean, you travel oh, all over the world. That's right. That's right. I've been. Uh, I was in South America directly from Italy. I left Italy in 1949, and uh, then I came in this country in 1951 in New York City. And from here, then I went to Australia, and I went to Japan. You know, it's great. You go to these towns and make money. All right, I want to show Bobby. Can we show the one down first? Or is, is that is that better? See, the one on the top. This this was taken in Japan. The, the, the top was in Japan. Yeah, the top right, where the I'm taking the Japanese. Is in yeah, Japan. that was and, in Japan. <laughs> but now <laughs> this is that? is this dirty? You're kicking a guy in the head. Well, I tell you what. Is this a tag team? It's a tag team mate. So you got you got. Where's your partner open. on the bottom? My partner was Barry Austin at the time. The blonde guy in the bottom. The blonde guy. Yes. Yes, and that was Barry Austin. And that's a referee, and the other guy was, I think, was uh, Mr. Tojo. And he was known around some of the parts of the country here in, in, uh, in the States, too. But that was in Japan. That was in 1963. Uh, uh, All right, let me ask, did you ever lose? I lost some single matches. I can count on my hands. I lost to a uh, single match. Tough to remember. I think <laughs> I lost, I, no, really. I lost more tag team match than I lost single match. I draw a lot. I get disqualified a few times because you get mad. I lost to Dick Houghton and uh, for the world title in Minneapolis. I sat in the hospital with torn cartilage. I had him pain and the referee, for some reason, was too slow coming around to count. And I got mad. I, I hit the referee. I should have. And I ripped the shirt and cost me $300 fine, which wasn't much. But three months suspension in many hours itself, which was a good time for me. You know, that's so it. That, that, that's yeah, yeah. All right, now this picture here, this was in 1953 in right. Haiti. Right. Now, before this, though, this bout here took place. You're the only man that's ever wrestled a boxer and won. Uh, yes, and won. Uh, I think there was another man that wrestled a boxer. His name was. Uh, uh, Marvin Mercer, which is the father of Bobby Mercer that played with the Yankee for right. some years. That's the father. And uh, he wrestled another boxer and they drew in uh, New Jersey someplace. When I went down to Haiti, Haiti, whatever, whatever you pronounce that name, you know, uh, Porto Prince. I remember Porto Prince Haiti. was the capital, Haiti. And I went down there and I'm broke. I, I, left, I left the country. I, I'm waiting for my papers to come in for a comeback with permanent visa in this country. And I got to make a living somehow. So I asked for a promoter, and I, I say, I challenge anybody here in idea, wait, left, or boxer, wrestler, I don't care who it is. I got to make some money. Well, you say, I got a boxer near her. I'll wrestle her. So we draw the rule, I wrestle and he boxed it. Did he have gloves on? He had gloves on. And, <clears> and uh, if you want to know, I can make them very short, I can tell you exactly what happened. And the third round, when you put them against the ropes, as a wrestler, I'm supposed to break. So I broke. As a boxer, you don't have to break. So he, he wiped me. <laughs> <laughs> right on the front teeth. In fact, I got brace here right now, okay? But he thought he knocked, he knocked me out. And I, I went, and I now, now I go back to what we do in wrestling. In wrestling, you never know if you very, very much hurt or you're not, because that's what we try to fool our opponent. Right. So I did the same thing to Agramonte. He thought I was out completely, and bell rang for the end of the round. So now my second, I had one second, the paisano mind, he didn't, he didn't know what, all I said, just give me some water, some towel, that's all I wanted, because he didn't know, he didn't know what was going on. And uh, he took me in the corner, and he said to me, Helio, are you okay? I said, don't worry about it, don't make any happy expression on your face, I'm very bad shape. Oh, he's got to really word, I emphasize very bad shape. So now I want him to come in the middle of the ring, because he was dancing around 
the outside perimeter. As soon as I attack him, he steps out in the rope and I have to, I have to let go. How can I pin a man if he's near the rope all the time and I have to let go? So now he sends the kill and he come in near my corner. And I, I went out of the corner like if I'm still groggy. As soon as he come in, I leg dive him by taking his out and shove him up that way. He, said, he, went on, he went on the ground and his head come in right near alongside me. And I put a, a headlock with my weight on the shoulder right on top of his chest and I hear him going, oh. that was it, Kumba. <laughs> that was done. All right. and, and he was one of the top, one of the number 10 at that time. One of the top 10 uh, boxers at that time, ring number 10. All right, let me ask you, this bugs me. Now, in, in the days there, were, there, the, there was a heavyweight champion. I mean, it, right. Right. Today, there's the Northeastern champion, the Southwestern Eastern champion, the Northern Southern Southeastern champion. There's, everybody's a champion today. It depends on where you wrestle. You're a champion. In, in, yeah. Well, everybody this, has a belt. Yeah. Everybody declares he's a champion. Well, that's, that's what happened. They got, a, they got a TV championship. They got all kinds of championships. Uh, maybe there's nothing wrong with it. If I follow more closely, I can give you the right kind of an answer. Uh, because everybody has the same kind of a weight. They're all every weight in there. Uh, the only thing that I say that at that time when I was wrestling, we had one champion. Lutez was a champion. He lost it to Pat O'Connor, which I wrestled Pat O'Connor here at the Dorm in Buffalo. Uh, Whip Watson had a championship for a year. And then Lutez got the championship again. He, the man had the championship for 12 years. And every time he comes around, he come here for a title. Uh, you, the top man in the territory of wrestling, if you don't beat him then, the only thing I hate to say that at that time we only wrestled one hour time limit. You need more than one hour to beat a man because, because he cannot win by disqualification, cannot win by count outside the ring. So you have to pin a champion in order to become a champion. In okay. one hour, time limit is not enough. Okay, Bobby, get, have Joe ask him to put the cam this camera on me and that camera right there I want you to put on Ilio's ankle and then we'll cut to it. Now, the big thing that people talk about is it's a show. Oh. <laughs> it's phony. I mean, nobody gets hurt, and everybody dances around. But I want to show you something. Let's take a look at this. That ankle, and this is from wrestling, and it's this right ankle. This plastic from... Yeah, yeah. It's a double the size almost, almost. Yeah. I stiff. I can't move it, see? When you wrestled, I'm not talking about today, yeah. when you wrestled. Was it? A show? Well, let me put, it's a long explanation that I have to give you, Paul, only because uh, to say it's a show and drop it is not fair to my profession. It's entertainment, let me put it okay, that right, way first right, of all, now. Yeah, right. We have to put, like I said before, you have to put the show on. The professional wrestlers is, you got to keep one thing on uppermost in your mind, that you have to beat your opponent and put the show on at the same time. Now, some people did by the gimmick, I do it by, I did it by maybe the guy give me a whack and you, and, and if he doesn't hit you that hard, you make believe that he, hit, that he hit you hard so that you can catch him with a surprise move or with a fix so you can pin him, you can beat him. I had one guy, uh, I had some tips to show you that the guy that for sure he had me. All of a sudden, I got him coming off the rope with airplane spin. I was, I was putting on the act to confuse him. He thought he was killing me for good, which I was hurting, but not as much as he thought I was hurting. See, we know we got to put the show on. That's the way we did. We know we got to put the show on, but you have to be able to beat the opponent. You know, in, in the days when you wrestled, there were no gimmies. Well, the gimmies we had, like I said, was Gorgi George come up with the game, and then a few more come on I after mean, that. What I'm talking about is, did, <clears throat> I'm going to ask you, did they ever ask you to take a dive and say, okay, this guy must win, you, 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 you sit down? As far as I remember, they never did. i tell you why. Because if they come in me and I come in from, from the whole country, they sign me up, they make me near, then if they tell me to lose, I'm not going to lose because I'm not going to feed my kids. And I got two, three kids back home, how am I going to feed them? So then when you wrestled, in some cases maybe, but in your case it was not phony. Well, no, because now if, if you says, forget it, I won't do that, okay? What they do, they make you disappear completely. I never disappear. So there's got to be a reason for it. You know, I mean, they, they don't put you on main event. They didn't give you a shot on the main event. You don't make no money. If you don't make no money, eh, how are we going to eat out of the bread and butter, Kumba? You know? Then you, you made a lot of there. friends, didn't you? I made a lot of friends. Love it's it. been great to me. It's been yeah. great. I met you. What the hell? That's right. You know? <laughs> but you also got the great restaurant. We got one yeah. minute. 
Yeah. Let's talk about this. You do so much for this community in Buffalo, uh, and we'll come back on again. There's a spaghetti dinner because we have to leave right after this, and you yeah, got my wife, yeah, and, we go. and you and I got have to go make meatballs. How many do we have to do? Well, I tell you, uh, this is uh, uh, Paul. Thank you for giving me a chance, by the way, because uh, it's a thing that we do every year. It's a yearly uh, spaghetti dinner for the Rotary South Shore Rotary Club. It's a club that meet in my, in my restaurant. And all the Rotary, of course, they do the same thing, like the lines do for the blinds. We do for crippled children and so on. And the spaghetti dinner we run this common Sunday. Okay. Uh, we're using a Lake Erie Hall, which is a bigger hall than what I have in my restaurant. Mine, the only seat might be 300, and they are about 500. And by doing that, now we go back down there, we're making 4,000 meatballs. All our club members meet, including the wife. You saw them coming in. OK. OK. Tomorrow, I will make three big pot, 80 gallons each of sauce, and then Thursday I'll do the same thing. Saturday morning we cook 400 pounds of spaghetti, and Sunday, if you can be there, I know you gotta be out of town anyway, but uh, if Beverly can be there, we sure we have to put out 1,500 spaghetti dinner and in four and a half hours, from 12.30 to five o'clock or 5.30, we put out 15 spaghetti dinner, 15 on the spaghetti dinner, and all our club members do it. Well, and I, I'm, I'm in the kitchen. I'm not that great on meatballs, but I volunteered my wife's service. She will, Thank she you, will, she will make meatballs tonight <laughs> at 4,000. We're going to take a break here on the Budweiser Sports Line. We're going to open up the phones. You can talk to Italy the Paulo. That's right my favorite beer, Paul. That's right. We're going to be right back. <laughs> That's terrific. Welcome back to the Budweiser Sports Line and Ilio DePaulo. And he has his restaurant on South Park, and everybody knows where. If you haven't been to Ilio's restaurant in this town, then there's something wrong with you because it is the best Italian food in town. But we promise you something we're going to show you. <laughs> we're going to show you now. Now, everybody, you hear it on television all the time. The figure four. The figure four. Right. And everybody thinks that this is a joke when it. Now, <clears throat> now we got Doug sitting on the floor here. And yeah. We have so many people working around here. We, Doug is expendable. So we can, you can do anything you want to him. <laughs> and he's almost done work. So I Ilya is going to show you the yeah. figure four. Now, well, first of all, Paul, you got to realize one thing that the figure four is not just applied to the guy, you just slam and pick him up. The okay. figure four has got to make sure that the guy is a little bit maybe after a couple punches and maybe a body slam so he can he's stunned a little bit. All right. Because if he's not now stunned, he's, he's, he'll get out. Now, let's suppose he's, he's stunned a little bit. Now he's in a position where I, I can apply, OK? OK. OK, so well, usually, that's okay, stay there. Don't worry about it. Usually, usually, you step over. Now, here at the beginning of the four. Watch this, OK? Now, we get this arm and this leg in here, put him in here. Now, in order to finish it up, I have to sit down. Get like this. You got to put him over. OK, now. <laughs> now, OK, you OK? Yeah. Doug, you all right. Okay, now. Doug, where is the pressure? Where's the pressure? Now, right on my if I put right this here, here down, if yeah. I put pressure near, the, the, the right on knees there. Okay. Right? How is it going? This where it hurts? Okay, right. No, this, this, this. Oh, that yeah, one? You see this one here? Oh, that knee. You see, you see what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right there. That's where I, all I got to do is stretch this out, and that me I can pop it. You can pop that leg, so the left leg. Right there, yeah. Okay. Because this one here is going right across his knees, and if he try to get out, he put more pressure there. Now, how can he get out of this? He can't. <laughs> See it, Doug? That's it. No, he can't. Okay, he's out. That's, he that's. Yeah. One of the things applied, he can That's the figure four. That's the figure four. Here's the four. See? Wait. One. Well, here's, yeah, here's the four. the four. Okay. Now, okay, let, uh, you all right, Doug? Yeah. All right. <laughs> You think he, don't don't ever th think that when you go to see Elio in his restaurant that he's an old man and he's retired. He's not. Now, one other thing I want you to show, Doug, is is that one where you know they, they it looks like a dance act. The uh, pressure on the elbow. Well, yeah. Sometimes, like if a guy come in and you see a street fight, he throw you a punch. You come in with a punch and you grab the wrist. If you grab the wrist and you put the weight on your chest on top of the, the elbow. Now wait a minute. Out. Now the pressure is right here, here right in the here. elbow, right? Right here. Right. Right now, how, how can he get out of that? Doug, do you know how to get out of that? No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? Easy, easy. Yeah. All right, now you're doing it, Ilio. Okay. Now put your chair. Put your chair <laughs> I love it. Okay, now you got me, right? All you got to do, turn this over and go like this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand it. Hey, Doug, are you all right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> I turned my arm. I turned my arm. Then, because it was like this, so you turn your arm, 
All right, now. Now there was one. Wait a minute. Before you put your mic back on, there was one other one that they showed. Doug has done. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> Very good. And we can have the the ambulance service in here. There's one other thing that they do on television, and they're talking about the sleeper hold. Is it bull? The sleeper hold. Can you? Is there a sleeper hold? You want to be on there? No. <laughs> wait a minute. I just want the, just the pressure point. Yeah, the pressure point. Oh the no! Point. Wait. It's right here. Oh. Wait a minute now. <laughs> okay, Paul. No. I didn't no, go to sleep. Yeah, I'll tell you, but, right but here, I'm, no off, kidding. Wait a minute. Off the blood. It's not the blood. Look at my head. It's purple. Are you crazy? Or... <laughs> yeah, but have you ever looked at the hands of this guy? All right. Small. So, yeah, small. But th that thing does work. You can put somebody to sleep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's dangerous because if you don't know how to revive, which I never know, I don't, I don't want to do it to anybody. All right. Here, let me, Where did uh, Mama Luke here go? I'm going to set them right in there. Okay. We're all set. Yeah, but the, so that we got these straightened out. Doug? No, you okay? Those things hurt, huh? And that, that's, that's not a, 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 a prop man or anything or somebody. That's true. Budweiser Sports Line, go ahead. Hi, Paul. It's Big Tim. Hey, Timmy. We hey, should... uh, what? One thing I got to ask you, Leo, but first of all, uh, Leo, I, I used to go down with my grandma watch it wrestle all the time, and uh, I thought my own opinion was your greatest matches were against Don Leo Jonathan. Right. I got that on tape when you come down to the restaurant, Kumba. <laughs> I got him on tape. That was a okay. beautiful match. And you were real good against Fritz von Erich, but there's one question I got for you. You wrestled the mass model four or five different times before you got his mask off, and my memory isn't what it used to be, and I wondered what his real name was. It was Jim something, but I can't... Jim Wright. Uh, Jim Wright. Jim Wright. Jim Wright. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'd just like to thank you for the memories. Me and Grandma had a good time. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime you want to catch some memories, come down at the restaurant. We got the tape. We can show it to you some old films in there. Okay, and there's one other thing, one other point I'd like Ilio to comment. Uh, I consider it a sport. Now, this Rick Azar cut Hulk Hogan and Mr. T down last week or something, and I think you guys are real athletes, whether it's an exhibition or or they ad lib a little bit. I think they're real athletes, and they don't get the credit they deserve. That's all I have to say. Paul. Thank, Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you very much. You know, can I comment a little bit Go on ahead. that? Yeah, sure. Uh, they call it a sport. They don't call it a sport. I let the people decide that. I, I only got to tell you a fact. When I was wrestling, <coughs> we were sponsored by the athletic uh, commission? commission. We had a athletic commission in town. We have a, a daughter that check us before going to the ring. They take 5% of the gross of the gate, and consequently with that, they pay the daughters, they pay the judge on the ringside, and they pay deputies that come in there and check and make sure that you get a license and everything else. Now, if you go over there and jump around and call them an exhibition, then you take the money. Why you want to take our money then? You know, it don't, it don't make, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm, you know, right, you exactly. what I'm saying? Tim is also saying one, one thing too, Ilio, that they treat it as a bunch of freaks. Wow. Uh, you've got Andre the Giant, you've got these different people, but I, I see pictures on your wall in your restaurant, uh, and the one that, that you're so very proud of. Uh, you were in great shape. These guys are in good shape, whether, whether they like it or not. They're yeah. still athletes. I tell you one thing. I used to be in a hell of a good shape. I'm in a hell of a shape now, though. What was your sports line? Go ahead. Oh, Paul, big job. Hey, John. Hey, Ilya. I got two questions for him and one for you, Paul. All right. First, uh, how come I'll make 2,000 meatballs if you body slam Paul? <laughs> I want to see some action. You know, okay, I tell you, that's but wrong. We're going go to have a couple of Budweiser before. <laughs> that's right. And not body slamming me. <laughs> Julia, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I was younger, I remember going to some of the matches in the yard. Uh -huh. Two players stuck out of mind, two uh, wrestlers. You and Bobo Brazil. Bobo the Coco Butt. The Coco Butt. Right. In the head. I right. love that. <laughs> Well, I'd love to see that. You know, you see something, they have these headbutts and then wrestling now. It's not like Bobo used to do. Oh, no, but he's a crackless call if he ate you with one. John, I've never asked you a question, but I'm going to ask you one as a caller, and you call frequently. Yeah. You and Tim both, and I, I, I should have done it with Tim also. When you go to a wrestling match, what do you expect? Are, are you entertained? Is that what you want, is entertainment? And, the, and do you get that? Uh, when I was younger, Paul, yeah. Now the wrestling... In my own heart, I know it's too much. There's, it's phony. Yeah. I'm being honest with you. You know, I was at one of the wrestling matches once, and I saw a guy going to hit another guy, and he dropped a blood sack on the canvas instead of putting it to his head. You know, 
That, that's phony. The wrestling, I can't see a 400-pound man jumping off the top rope on your head and you getting up to fight the rest of the game. The best. <laughs> I mean, well, we, we understand that there, that there is some show business in it. But it's I think just to me, I'm, I was entertained, you know, back when there was real wrestling. I consider real wrestling. I watch a few matches on TV on Saturday or Sunday on 29 when I get nothing else to do. Okay? Just for a laugh. Right. But when he used to fight and Bobo, to me, maybe because I was younger, what it looked real, 100% real. I, I tell you, can I comment, John? Yeah. Uh, you don't happen to remember when uh, somebody was jumping off the top rope and, and uh, his name was Kilder Kowalski and uh, he jumped on you, Konerik, and he chopped half of his ears, ears off, which is what his ear was just like mine, mm -hmm. with cauliflower like this one here. I don't know if you're watching TV on it now. Yeah. And Yukon was only left with the little part, the little lobe below, because the top one popped right out. You hear him with the knee right there, right out. And this happened in Montreal. Hmm. Well, you're talking about in those days too. What question yeah. do you want to ask me there? Well, I'm, well, that's a, a comment, okay? It's not nearly a sport. I want to make my prediction for the Sabres again. Yeah. I made it last year. Okay. I want to be kind this year. Okay. I think they're going to win one game against Quebec. <laughs> Goodbye, John. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, let's wish him luck. Come on. That's right. Let's wish him luck. He's been an avid fan of everyone. Huh? Uh, yeah, sure. One person I'm going to ask you about. Yeah. And everybody thinks I'm crazy. Hat Pin Mary. She used Hat to be at the Ma side of the oh. ring. <laughs> With the long hat pin is sticky right in your hat old pin. bundle. Oh yeah, hat pin. And then when she changes one of that, she gets she gets she gets somebody smoking a cigar with him, burn you up with cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Did she ever stick you in the? No, no, no. She was after the villains. Oh, she, yeah. she didn't. All the bad no, guys. She, never, no, yeah, all she the had bad a hat guys. pin. Yeah. yeah. And and when they got near yeah. the end of the ring, yeah. she'd stick it right in there. And, and that yeah. thing, I know that went in. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I used to love her. Everybody thought I was crazy about old hat pin. Budweiser Sports Line, go ahead. Budweiser Sports Line, go ahead. Yeah, hi, Paul. I'm Jim from the Pew. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Good. All right, I like, I like to ask Elio a couple of questions, uh, actually one question. I want to give him a few maneuvers, and I want him to tell me if these maneuvers are real or not. Now, what about the vertical suplex when the wrestler picks him up off the ground? Yeah. Right up in the air. You saw them for landing. Now, do both You tell me. What? You saw them landing, didn't you? Yes. Okay, well, you tell me. Now, listen, I'm a big fan of professional wrestling. Right. All right, I go to, quite frequently, I go to the matches down at the yard. And uh, to me, it's a sport. People complain. Right. I don't know if right. you saw the report on uh, 2020 by John Stoffel. Is it a sport or is it fake? And he made it out to be like it was, you know, not for real. Is there such a thing as blackballing? Did you ever have an, a... a uh, it, it does, it does uh, happen that, uh, that uh, people get blackballed from different sports. It happens all the time, but... Uh, uh, I'm not on top of the thing that they do uh, lately, these two guys, I never know them. The only thing that I, that I see when that guy hit the guy in the interview when I 2020, the guy was interviewing him, I think that was a very poor taste uh, for all our business, regardless uh, now or before, because uh, he's, we were trying to do his, his job and that's his business to go there interviewing people. If you don't want to talk to him, leave him alone. Don't or answer him whatever you want, but don't touch him, because you get a guy with a big hands like that, he, and you hit him with, uh, with his... Uh, Forehand like this, not the face. Just forehand right, uh, but right on the temple. And then you give him another one. I mean, you, you could you could kill a guy. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, I want to ask one more question. Did you uh, ever encounter any matches with Bruno San Martino? Uh, not against Bruno. We were partner at the Madison okay, Square Garden uh, a couple of times. Go on, go ahead. Yeah. I just I just cut off. And uh, we were partner, me and him, uh, against the Russian guys in, uh, at the garden. And too bad that uh, I had to retire a little bit too quick because of my legs. Uh, I was giving me trouble. I had seven injuries since uh, seven operations since then. But uh, otherwise, I would like, like to team up with him quite a bit because he, he went down and became a good champion. You know. And, it's amazing. Uh, incidentally, we are from the same region in Italy, Abruzzese. Yeah. We are you know, about 30, I mean, 30 miles apart. Everybody from, calls and they talk about the old days. They remember, they remember you know, all yeah. the old days. Sure, they do. Oh, and yeah. That's a great thing. We're going to yeah. take a break here in the Budweiser Sports Line. We'll be back yeah. with Elio DePaulo right after this. And Doug is going to the hunt. No, no, no. no, no. no. Doug's all right. He's happy. He's, he's, he's doing well. He's, he's going to take Ilio on three out of four when this is all over with, out in the parking lot. But he's also got a gun and a ball bat. Ilio, they talk about things, Bobby, 
brought up a, a, a thing, a razor blades, Bobby, that they, they put in it. Anybody, were you ever hit with chairs or anything like that? I mean, I, I've been hit with the chairs a few times. Uh, I remember one time where you Connecticut got almost killed because somebody hit them with a chair and the chair had a nail sticked out. Apparently somebody fixed the chair, uh, maybe it was broken on the ringside. They fixed it up and there was a nail this long sticking out and, and catch them just, just, just a little bit on the end of the head. If that, if that nail would have been two inches inside, it would have hit them right, in the right on top of the brain. You know, uh, hitting them with the chair is, is very dangerous. You know? <clears throat> Is there one is there one thing that you could tell fans about how to how to act in an auditorium? Because you see, people get stupid because the guy's coming out. All of a sudden, no. these guys. I mean, uh, whether it's for real or it isn't for real, and they're hyper and they're all pumped up. I know. And, and all of a sudden, the guy gets out of the ring, and some stupid fan's going to walk up and take a shot. These guys are going to well, nail you. Well, first of all, never go in the ring picking these guys because that is unwritten law. We protect each other. I mean, regardless. Because I don't want my guy to end up, my, my opponent to end up getting killed. Who I going to wrestle tomorrow? <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. I like that. And uh, another thing, too, they're going to get hurt bad because these guys, you know, they weigh 300 pounds, 280 pounds. They give you a back end. You fly, you fly over the top rope and you're going to end up on, and then you can't even sue him because he end up, he stepped in the ring where he had no right to go in the ring. Sure. And so stay away. Have a good time. I went to the WrestleMania uh, a couple of Sundays ago. When was it? And uh, I tell you, I, I study the people more now than when I was wrestling. When they were wrestling, you try to bring the emotion out of the people. Right. I was there sitting, and I see the emotion come out. There were a couple of girls behind me. I had my granddaughter with me, seven years old, and she wanted to go. I surprised her. I said, let's go. And these people, as soon as they started the big drum come in over Western Mania team, these girls stood down. They scream so loud, my granddaughter went like this. I mean, you know, it's it just, they let it out. They went there, they had some fun, Paul. They are having fun. They go there, they are having fun. And whatever the guys do in the ring, uh, regardless of what they call it, number one, nowhere they can get that kind of satisfaction. If that's what they enjoy down there and scream and let it out, there is nowhere they can go out and do that. Not even in the football games. Because yeah. the football game is not that prolonged. You know what I mean? You got to hey, scream and then you stop because the referee maybe get mad at him. That's why they're frustrated and they start throwing things. When they had the wrestling yeah. here well, a the couple of weeks ago, they sold out. I, I was down there. Yeah, they sold yeah, out. I was down there. They sold, they sold out at the Madison Square. They sold out in, in Rochester. They was all uh, closed circuit. They sold out all over. It was all over the world. It's That's, a big thing. I love it. Tremendous. I love it. What was the sports line? Go ahead. Oh, Ilio, I just want to tell you, I was going to the wrestling back in the 50s. My father and I had season tickets. I got a question, but I just want to make a couple comments. Wait a minute. I would, there were season tickets in those days oh, for yeah. wrestling? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, we had at least we had at least four or 5,000 season tickets. That's, that's fantastic. Oh, sure. Go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted you. I just didn't, I didn't uh, realize. No problem. I can remember the matches. Baron Gatoni. Uh, right. You had the Judo Jack and Magic against Sato Kiyomuka. Right. Teamed up with Billy Lyons, the Tolos, the Gallaghers, the Millers. Right, right. My Good. question, oh, I've been down to your bar a couple times, saw the films. Oh, oh I, great. I'm I go glad. back about 20 years. And my, Did you enjoy it? Oh, I loved it. Good. I had my son with me. He, right now, he's a Hulk Hogan fan, but I'm sitting there <laughs> at the bar, and I'm watching the matches, and I'm telling him, oh, this is great. I remember this, and he's going, you know, and he's getting into it then. How old is your son? He's 10. Did I give him an autograph at the time you were down there? You gave me an autograph. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, I have a question. It's kind of a serious question. Uh, whether it's fake, whether it's real, you go for the enjoyment of it. Uh, the question I've got, if it is fake, these guys still are taking an awful pounding, the suplexes, the jumping off the top rope. Right. Is there any type of insurance that you had back in the, in the older days and that you know of nowadays, or is it just up to the individual person? And what happens when these people do get laid up, a broken leg or an arm or whatever, is there any type of compensation that they receive? Well, that's a very good question. Yeah, very good Thank question. Thank you very much. Very good yeah. question. I tell you, at my time, I don't know if they have any program now, but at my time, to get insurance, I tell you what I had to do. Not for myself as much, because we couldn't get no coverage. But for myself, uh, and my wife can testify to this, because I had to go, I went to Rochester and work on a, on a plastic bags factory for three months so that I could get the blue shirt and blue cross. And I got hurt, I, got, I had knee swollen like this, broken ankle, and everything else, broken ribs. Uh, and I never turned into blue shirt and blue cross because they were canceled. 
I only turn in that for my family and the protection for my family, which then I end up having four kids. Mm -hmm. But uh, because we had no coverage. Uh, I hope they do have coverage now because you take those so played. I don't care whatever they say right now, but these guys doing a lot dangerous maneuver they do right now, going up on the top rope. A guy can slip and, and a guy can shake the ropes on the other side and, and lose the balance, the guy can fall right down. Or when he, fly, when he goes on top of the guys and, and if a guy uh, still got enough sense to stick a knee out there and can get him and, and, and you know, you, you can get, you can get very hurt. The big so play, they go up in the air. If you fall a little bit wrong, put the back of your neck and you get to your neck a little bit more on one side. Ciao, go back. Especially when you, you know? got a guy four or 500 four, pounds falling on you. And I mean, these guys are 300 pounds, 350 pounds. They move like Don Leo Jonathan used to move. I got a show when he come down to the restaurant. It was, I pick the guy, give him a monkey flip from the head, he ended he end up on his feet and drop kick me. I had, I had to pour out that match more than I ever pulled out in my life. Honestly, you got to see it to believe it. I don't believe that match because the guy was so quick. And what this so man's big. telling you, anytime you come to the restaurant, he's always there. Well, that's when he's on a golf course. But when he, and well, they'll, well, put, they'll, put, play they'll put the film on for you. <laughs> and you're talking the old days and when they end today, some of the stuff today. By the way, your sports line. Go ahead. Um, I'd like to ask Ilio a couple questions. Go ahead. Um, Ilio, how'd you get started in wrestling? Okay, well, and the second one. Um, who's your favorite wrestler nowadays? Nowadays? It, it, nowadays? <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Good. First of all, how did you, how'd you get started? Did you, well, is it just to make money or is it something that well, you... He, the, that's, another, that's another story that I can take five minutes on that. I had polio when I was small. I was 12 and a half years old. I had polio. And I went to a gym to rehabilitate myself. And I, I, and I got to get stronger and stronger. In the same gym where they start, they were guys wrestling. Greek Roman and then the pros used to come in. And as I get stronger, I used to go to sleep and I say, oh, those moves. Oh, well, I can do those moves, no problem. Then I go try, but the legs wasn't quite ready yet. And by the time I was 18, I beat everybody in the gym. I learned everything, watching them every day. Yeah. You know, I, I was lucky enough to recuperate. And, and, and if you notice, this leg here was always smaller. Uh, you can notice the difference between the two legs. Uh, yeah, look, yeah, look at this and this. So you, you had yeah. polio on your right leg. Right one, yeah. And then the same one that broke then later on. Yeah. Then all of a sudden one. you realize you can make money at yeah, it. Yeah, make money. Then I went down. <laughs> From Italy, I went down to South America. In South America, I met uh, a promoter called Tootsmond, which is dead now in New York. And I, I got a contract with him, come down to the United States. Your favorite yeah. guy today. Do you have a favorite today? Right now, I... I because I know, know you don't have that much time to watch it, but there's no. but you, as much as you can, you do. Well, I tell you, uh, my Sergeant like, Slaughter, I'm gonna tell you now. Yeah. Well, I think I think right now, uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, he's uh, he was down in my place. I got a picture autographed by him, and uh, you know, and, and he's a, he's such a big guy, and he works so hard at it, you know, and, and he's he's not he doesn't take any backseat on anybody, and uh, he's my favorite guy right now. Uh, Andre the Giant was in the restaurant, by the way, talking about uh, these big guys now. You didn't feed and, uh, Andre the Giant. Well, I put two chairs together. We fed him, I think it was seven order ravioli and, and uh, uh, three order homemade fettuccine. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I called my son, Dennis. I said, Dennis, he was home. I said, you got to come down and see this man because you may, he may never stop here. If he doesn't stop here, you miss something in your life because this guy is the most awesome. I saw him two weeks ago in the airport in you know, Phoenix. I mean, he, he, you look at him and you say, oh, God. Can he, I can't be so big. And he's not big and real fat. You know, he's, he's just a trunk. Hey, I know. He's, 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 he's a mind. huge man. Huge. Just huge. He's got a 100-pound head, that guy. I, yeah, how can he move him? I don't know. I, <laughs> I know you're not going to get a headlock on him. No, that's for sure. Because I, I don't know anybody try. with arms long enough to get a headlock I wouldn't on. even try it. <laughs> Kareem Abdul-Jabbar may be the only guy with long enough arms to get yeah, a headlock on Yeah, but then he'd him. just pick him up and flip him right that's in sports <laughs> uh, Okay, I have two questions. Number one, who's the toughest wrestler that... Um, Elio ever wrestled against, and okay. um, two was Abdul the Butcher back around then. Uh, Abdul okay. the Butcher was just uh, just starting when I retired. I don't know too much about <laughs> Abdul him. Abdul the Butcher. Yeah, Go ahead, Abdul I... the Butcher. Yeah, but uh, the toughest wrestlers, I gotta split that in two categories: a wrestler, wrestler, and a rough wrestler. The roughest one was Fritz von Erich, and the toughest wrestler. Pound for pound was Lutez. Not for nothing, he was the championship for 12 years. How much the, did the he world weigh? Champion. The Lutez weighed 235, 240 pounds. When I you weighed, were at your top, uh, what, how much did you weigh? 245. 245. Yeah. 
to 45. During the holidays, if I take a few days off during the holiday, I go up to 50. Boy, did I feel I want to go back in the ring immediately. Yeah. Who, know? the heaviest guy you ever wrestled? I, uh, I have a tape down at the restaurant. I wrestled a guy about 340 pounds. I pick him up, the airplane spin, and I still feel the rupture that I had that night. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you hope your jock strap holds up. <laughs> they, 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 huh? Thank God they did. <laughs> <laughs> but watch the sports line. Go ahead. Oh, there we go again. Hey, we, thank we, you, Kumba. Uh, yeah, that's, Same that's, to you. Well, you know, uh, I heard a great line. It's once. a lot of fun. I, yeah, I heard a great line one time. It, it said, I understand it takes an IQ of five to get a phone. So he must have called from a pay phone. Tony McKegney used that one night. How much time do we have? Do we have a hey, time for another one? We got one. But watch the sports line. Go ahead. Um, what, where do you get your training to be a wrestler, and how did you get started in wrestling? Okay, we already had the one about how do you get started, and I started back in Italy, but, uh... Have you trained? Training, training is, well, is it, that's, it's, it, it's 12 months out of the year, isn't it? Yeah. For these guys today. You should, you should, uh, uh you should start with the high school wrestling and the program that they have. They have a lot of controlled by some good qualified coach in the area. I followed because of my, my, both of my sons have wrestled in high schools, and uh, they are some tremendous coach around here. In fact, my good friend uh, Al Bimeller, he played with you. Yeah. He's coaching in Lackawanna right now, too. And I have coached in, like, in Orchard Park and, uh, and uh, Frontier. By the way, I donated a trophy for the best wrestlers there and four or five schools around my area because the kids get involved. For the kids get involved, they're they going to get ahead in life. Uh, I didn't learn anything. I didn't go to school, but fifth grade, oh, but the traveling, an experience that I had when I was traveling through the world, that that one-on-one -on -one that you do in, in that mat, it gets you through a lot more trouble than you think. Okay. That's right. Makes you because believe you got to make decisions. You got you to do things. It give you confidence. Uh, so, you know, and these guys, that's a place to start. You start in high school. You grow up. You grow up. Don't forget your grade because if you get a lousy grade, don't come home to me. I'll give you a get the belt out. <laughs> I can't touch with my hands. My hands are too big, Paul. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break here in the Budweiser Sports Time. We'll be back with Ilio DePaulo right after this. Welcome back to Budweiser Sports and my very good friend for over 20 years now, Elio DiPaolo, who is a professional wrestler in Buffalo, and, and, and it's, it really is heartwarming to him and to me that uh, when you bring back the old days and these people call and talk, they remember, you know. Oh, they, yeah, they remember. Oh, you better believe it. And you, but the nice part about it, you got the films you show them. Yeah. <laughs> I, <love well>, <laughs> I, I tell you what, Paul, there is people come in and said, my son, I know I saw you, but my son didn't. And they bring him down there for the son to meet me. Isn't that great? I feel that's, so that's good about that. About I feel so good about that, you know. Okay, you're on the Budweiser Sports Line. Go ahead. Yeah, good evening, Paul. Good evening. Um, how you doing? Um, my question, uh, first of all, I'd just like to say, uh, I'd like to say thanks to Elio for all the memories. Uh, I you think he's probably one of the top five um, athletes in Buffalo sports history. Uh, my question is, what would uh, Elio consider one of his toughest matches, or his, definitely his toughest match of all time? All time? Okay. Yeah. okay. I have a, I had one with the Lutets, in Winnipeg, uh, that was very, very tough. In fact, it was a one-hour draw. And after that, he come, at the, he come in and he give me an autograph picture of himself. And that autograph picture is in the restaurant right now. I made him big, a big size like those, those things are. Uh, and I think he mentioned to a hell of an athlete. They said, good luck. He had, you know, usually, he, he just went, so we did trade old for one hour, time limit, trade olds, and he couldn't pin me, he tried everything, and I couldn't pin him either. That's it. Is there another one? You said there might be two. Is there another one? Another one? Yeah, uh, well, there was Pat O'Connor was a champion at the time. I rested here in Buffalo, the same thing as one hour, one hour time limit. Uh, the roughest one that I wrestled uh, was Fritz von Erich. I mean, the rough, tumble, wrestle, you know, this guy don't buy anything, you know, from, he's, he's the one that invented the call. The claw never worked on me because uh, in order for the claw to work, first of all, and work, claw on the body, you got to be very, you got to have a very weak muscle to begin with. So if you... Could work on me then. Yeah. Well, it worked on me now too, Kumba, you know. <laughs> 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 you know, because when you start to grasp for for, you know, you poop, forget it. And then it's where you dig in. But uh, if not, uh, they won't work. If not, if you're in shape. You had your ankle broken in the ring? 
yeah, hanging outside. We were fighting right on, on near the, the, the top rope and the middle rope. You know, the, I was coming back from outside the ring and he was in. And I'm trying to step in and the guy hit me with the knee, right on, right on the knee. And I went back and I got the bottom, the, the middle rope to the bottom like this, in this position like this. Like this, if the two ropes, yeah. you got the foot was in, then I get the other one cut snap it. Snap it. I don't want to hear that now. I've had my, I've no, had fingers I don't, want, I don't want to remember that. I feel so good now. I can play golf finally <laughs> now. <laughs> but why is the sports line? Go ahead. Yes. Would you still be wrestling today if it weren't for your injury? Well. Oh, good question. I tell you what. I mentioned that to Paul. I said, then I said, I probably be still wrestling. I thought, I was talking to Dennis the other day, my son, and my, both my son around Long Jim and Michael. And I said, you know, maybe see how everything's happened. I said, now we open up the restaurant because I didn't know about the restaurant. But my ankle was so bad that the last match I had, I was in Welland, Ontario, was against the Beast. And I had the Beast on the airplane spin, and I collapsed under. Because my, my, my ankle gave away. And when I, fell in, when I fell down, it almost broke my neck because, you know, it just fall with no, no control. Right. You know? And uh, I said, forget it. That's it. At that time, I already had a business going. You know, I started uh, five, six months before. This was in August of 65. I started mm -hmm. in January 65, uh, the business. And I said, forget it. It's time to call it off. And then I start a series of operations. So well, Doug, maybe, maybe Doug I think she can make a comeback well, if you want. Maybe the, as 50, 56 years old is not too bad. You know, I'm only 58, and I don't lie about my age because I got no reason to lie. Why I'm should sure. I lie? You know? I tell you, uh, you look good for 58. Well, I tell the how people... How come you look... I'm 46, you look better than me. Why? You know what? I tell the people when they come in, I say, geez, how old are you? I tell I'm 68, 69. Oh, you look good. You look good for that. But I don't <laughs> have to lie. No, I, really, I am, I, I am 58, and, and that's... Uh, and I'm very proud that I can still uh, do my own. I do my exercise. I take three chairs, do a lot of exercise, push-ups, back, uh, deep bend, uh, uh, push-up from back way, front way, anyway. Well, you could do uh, you could do your, your I could do, I lift do weights with Doug. Yeah, just use his body. Little. He only weighs 165. <laughs> you threw him around like he wasn't in there. By the way, your sports line. Go ahead. Yeah, hello. I got a couple questions, if I could. Go ahead. Uh, first question: uh, If professional wrestling is a sport, why aren't there ever any statistics given as wrestlers enter the ring, such as wins and losses? Okay. There is. And uh, the second question: uh -huh. uh, What do you think of the tag team uh, combination? The possibilities of uh, Walt Podobny and Rick Vive. Who's Walt Podobny? I, 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 I told you, I don't watch <laughs> the thing too much. Rick Vive's a hockey player, isn't he? Big uh, no. good. I yeah. don't know. I, no, the, the comp people. each combination all depend, all depend if they want to team up together. Like I used to team up with uh, uh, Billy Red Lines. I teamed up also with uh, um, the Coco Bot uh, King, you know, in uh, over Brazil. I, I teamed up with whoever was coming around. It didn't make any difference to me. Uh, but as far as uh, record being kept, there is. Uh, you come down at the restaurant, we had a record kept for all the championship fights that was kept in there. And every match that I have and that I had, they got them all cataloged now, whatever I they think, had. Them. I think the one question he's talking about is that when you see him on television today, they don't put a win-loss record on, on, a, on a wrestler when they bring him in the oh, ring today. They just, well, sure. I mean, just comes because in. Because they've wrestled three, four times a week. That's right. They do that. Yeah. Right. These guys travel right. a lot. They travel. Right now, they travel so much because they, they, they are exposed in so many places. And there's only the same uh, 20, 30 people that are making a lot of money. They have to travel to go make the money, whatever it is. But why is the sports line? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, this is a question for Leo. Go ahead. Um, my father and grandma used to go to see you on Friday nights. And uh, my father said you had kind of a bad temper. <laughs> what did he say? Why? Okay. Is that what you want to ask him? No, I got, um, I wanted to comment, uh, my father was telling me about your match against Buddy Rogers in the odds, uh -huh. mm -hmm. with your hand through the swinging doors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. His first thing, his first statement was, thank you very much for your call. His first statement was that his father said that you had a bad temper. Well, I tell you, when you get beaten by the people, it's, by, it's about time you start to retaliate. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What is uh, this through the hands through the door? Well, uh, I've wrestled Buddy Roger, and the referee was Jersey Joe Walcott. Now, Jersey Joe Walcott uh, come in and Buffalo referee and, and living in the town, come then, New, come then New Jersey. And unknown to me, Buddy Roger Lim come from the same town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? And uh, 
I thought I had Buddy Roger beat and was never around to count him. And finally, we ended up fighting outside the ring. And uh, we went through fighting right outside, went through the door, what, what went, went to the wind side. And I had, I had, I had, I think, seven stitch on the leg, and he had about eight, eight on, on my end, and he had 18 stitch right up here, almost tore all the things, right? Both through the glass door at the, at the auditorium. <laughs> you choking uh, I was trying to put his head through there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, then he, to save his head, he went, by, he went with his hand, and, and, and then both our hands went in there, and, and the, glass, the glass opening. See how fake that really goes. is? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you, I tell you, I got a broken shoulder up in Venezuela. I tell you, how I done that. I, the guy was throwing me outside the ring on the post. You know, you know, one arrow side ring, grab you by the hair and throw you on the corner post. And they had a post, and they had apparently it was broken or was weak because they put it together and there was a bolt through there that they put the wrong way. Usually the bolt should run always the other way. Yeah. Okay. And it was run this way, and, and I'm and lucky. I I saw it, and I saw that things taken out this much. A big bolt, and when I swung this out, I just went out to avoid the thing. I went on the side like this, and I hit this thing right, right on the post. Broke your shoulder. It broke. You can feel it. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. take a break here on the Budweiser Sports <laughs> Line. We'll be right back with Elio DePaulo right after this. Welcome back to Budweiser Sports Line. Paul McGuire, Ilio DePaulo. It's been my pleasure, my friend, all night long. But we've got a couple of things we're going to do. First of all, we got one more time. We've got the spaghetti dinner coming up that we're, you, and, you and my wife and I are going to go down and do 4,000 meatballs. We've got to do it right now. Okay. And this is, this is Sunday, and this is for That's crippled Sunday, children. Sunday, for the crippled children, the benefit, all the work that we do, and all the money that we made. Last year, we made $6,000 go crippled children in the uh, uh, old age uh, um, homes and, and OLB, hospital, whatever they need any, any help, we help all of them. Remember, that's the Lake Erie Club. It's Lake Erie uh, Club and Lackawanna. Park. Lackawanna, 12 noon to 5, 30 p.m. Children, $2, adults, $4. Right. Take it out, 25 You can take it out. All right. One other thing, we had, uh, uh, we were talking uh, the, the basketball game between the Buffalo Bills and the Buffalo Police Department. Uh, that's going to be at the uh, Kessler Center April the 15th. And you know that that benefits uh, Camp Good Days and Special Times. So if you get a chance on April the 15th for that, that's 7.30 p.m., I believe. And the uh, ticket outlets, I'm going to give you a number here you can call. It's 886-0140, 886-0140. So if you get a chance to catch that and you get to see your favorite Buffalo Bills. Now, that's a lot of fun. For having you on the show, now I'll give you something. You've given me one of the more delightful hours that I've had in a long time. It's my and pleasure. I, and and it's, I, love, I love the show and the people out there do too. That's why they watch it. It's, now it's, let me give you something. Wow. Solomon's, you know Paul Solomon? It's been, yeah, Square Western. sure. I'm giving you steak dinner for two plus all the champagne you can drink. Oh, Paul my Solomon. God. <laughs> 3775 Seneca Street. All right. We've got chicken Great. wings from Rudy Kazuti's Pump Room out on Millersport Highway. That's right. That's go in there and take, oh, we got to go out now, huh? Now you take the kids out there. And you get sure, it. I take the kids out there. Delasonic car washes for your car so you get all ready for the spring. You put your right golf now. clubs in. That's, yeah. a, that's the car wash of the Buffalo Bills, the Sabres, and all the wrestlers that come to Buffalo. And mine, too. I go that's there right. all the time. You get the new soft clothes. Yeah. Yeah. From Bell Tire, Jim Gordon. You know Jim, a good sure. friend of mine. He's got a, the computerized front alignment of your car. Okay, we got time. Also, uh, from the Hilton Hotel, a weekend for two for you and your bride. Up two days in the bridal suite on us. Oh, my okay? God. Yeah, but most great. of all, most of all, <laughs> we gotta go. Most of all, I got a case of Budweiser for you. Oh, Look that's that's well, my favorite you. beer. Thank, you. thank, thank you, you, my friend, for being on the show. It was a pleasure, really. really Elio DePaulo, pleasure. don't forget okay. his restaurant in South Park. You'll thank enjoy you. it. That's where we'll be later on tonight. Thank you for watching. I just gotta tell you, and I'm almost sure about this, but in two weeks we're gonna have Don King on, the boxing promoter. Uh, all right. Which I, almost I, it's almost sure. So we're we're hoping for that. We may be doing something again next week. But we'll try to do something as we can. See you next week, same time, same station. Bye. Bye.